Oh my goodness. Okay, this is my gripe. I'm going to put a gripe out about eBay or Etsy, you know, and you're looking for a nice jade bangle. You see this? It's going back to Hawaii. Why? Because they put the wrong size. They said it was 51 millimeter. I bought it. They sent it to the authenticator. Uh, the authenticator sent it on and said, I can't authenticate it. It's listed wrong. Sure enough, I get it and I look and that bangle is way big. So I did the millimeter gauge. I sent the picture to the person that listed it. He's apologizing profusely, but it's taken three, four days now. And when I bought it, you know, by the time they sent it to the authenticator and then they send it to you, you know, it's been a week. So my money's tied up in a bangle that I can't wear. Now it's a perfectly lovely bangle and I would have been really happy to have it, but uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, of course, it doesn't fit. Now I run across this again with Etsy, same thing. I bought a bangle, they sent it here. They said it'll fit a six inch wrist, six and a half inch. Goes down to here on me. It's a seven inch bangle. Then they go, well, we don't accept returns. We, uh, you can exchange it for something. And I said, this is not my problem. Uh, when you listed it, you listed the wrong size. Here it is, and I take a picture and show them. This is what you listed it, 51 millimeter. It's a 55 millimeter. That's a huge difference. No, I cannot wear it. And so they refunded my money. So this has happened twice. I get another one. There's one I would love to buy. It's what I've been looking for, the white, the, the snow in moss, what they call it. The white with the green, okay? Now, the person that listed it hasn't sold anything there before. It's a jewelry store. And I have texted them through eBay three times. They will not answer. They want to charge $52 for shipping. Even from Hawaii, it was $15 for the shipping to send it to the authenticator. This person wants to sell, wants to charge you $52 for shipping. And, and they say, uh, no returns. Uh, so I've asked numerous times, you say it fits a six and a half inch wrist, what the heck does that mean? Can you give me the millimeter size across so I know what size, if it will fit me or not? They don't, they don't answer, okay? And you get so many that say, if it's a small wrist. Yeah, no, it's a seven, seven inch, eight inch. That's huge. <laughs> so this is my gripe. You can't list a bangle and say, oh, if it's a six and a half inch, well, what, what does that mean? A six and a half inch wrist, what, down to here? Tight, loose, what? Okay, um, what does that mean? Okay, now on my wrist, this is the biggest one. Uh, and if they measure it, it's like six and three quarters. If it was a quarter bigger, it, it, would, it goes down to here. A seven inch bangle goes on me down here. You can't wear it. You can, <laughs> can you imagine wearing a bangle that goes down on your pan like that? So when they say it fits a six and a half inch wrist, what does that mean? It, does that mean it's a seven inch bangle and it's gonna fit, you know, down to here? Like I said, this is way bigger than what I usually wear because I have a soft hand. It collapses in and I can wear much smaller bangles, which I like to wear the tighter ones. Um, so when they're saying it fits a seven inch wrist, it fits a six and a half inch wrist, what the heck does that mean? 
fits it how loose is it hanging down like this on that size what what <laughs> I'm like you know what makes you crazy because every time they've said it fits a six and a half inch wrist if I've taken the chance to buy it comes and sure enough no it's a seven inch bracelet and it doesn't fit and then they get upset because you know it, it doesn't fit it's not that I just changed my mind and bought it and just decided oh I don't want it no it just doesn't fit like I said this one now this is my good Ming's bangle you can see how loose it is compared to my other ones now a lot of people wear their bangles like this most people wear their bangles down like this you know that's their normal thing and for a Ming's this is a small small size okay now again if it were any larger it would go down to here and I couldn't wear it that's what happened with the one I have from my daughter if I remember right it's Ming's as well and it's a nice translucent it's like this you can't see really how translucent this is, but this is very, very translucent. And, um, but the one I had was, you know, um, the type with the gold that opens. It would come down here on my wrist. I couldn't wear it. I gave it to my daughter for her wedding. Um, very, very nice bangle. But, um, Again, you know, I'm sitting here trying and, and you get a hold of them and say, well, what is the millimeter? Well, it's, it's six and three quarters inches across or don't give me inches because you cannot really measure it with a ruler. <laughs> you need, <laughs> can you just buy, can you buy, just buy one of these little gauges that's like $11, okay? You can buy a gauge and you can measure it exactly. Okay, for the millimeter. This has got millimeters or it's got inches. Okay, um, $11, you can get it at Lowe's. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's, it's cheap. And then you know exactly what size it is rather than saying it'll fit this inch wrist. Well, again, what does that mean? Fits it loose, fix, fits it what? <laughs> So when I hear them say that, it just, I, I just get crazy because, you know, that doesn't mean anything to me. It'll fit that wrist. Or sometimes they'll say it'll fit up to that size wrist. How difficult is it to, to actually measure it? Or they'll say it's two and a half inches wide. Again, you can't measure it correctly with a ruler. Or they lay a ruler, you know, buy it, and you're supposed to be able to tell the size. You can't tell when you lay a ruler next to a bangle what the size is. <laughs> I was like, for God's sakes, please, <laughs> buy <laughs> buy a millimeter gauge again I have another one I've looked at numerous times it's in Hawaii now they say it's 50 millimeter and then they say it's seven inch inside well if it's 50 millimeter then it's not seven inch which is it if it's seven inch then it's 55 millimeter that's a big difference from what you're saying is 50 millimeter across which is it is it 50 millimeter or is it seven inches again another huge difference and you know there are some that i've always looked for a really nice 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 bangle um but you get that and and the same one that's in Hawaii, they say this will fit a small wrist, and then it says it's 46 millimeter. Well, 46 millimeter is, is like a baby's, a baby's thing. 
So I don't know if they can't know, they don't know the difference between the millimeter and the other. I don't know how they're trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord have mercy. So I got a hold of the one that's, both of these are Hawaii. This one's going back. He says, I don't know what happened. I don't know how it got listed wrong, but uh, he's nice. He did send, you know, he said, just send it back and I'll refund your money. And I said, well, I'm not sending it back, paying for it and paying the uh, insurance and everything on it. It's not my fault that it got listed wrong. So he did send me the um, a return thing today. Then he says, oh, send it in a padded envelope. I already had it in a nice box ready to send it back. So now I got to unpack it and just send it in a, a padded envelope. I'm just going, oh my God. So uh, dealing with them. Now you want to try to find, if you could find the bangle um, that's pre-1970, 1970, late 70 is when they started dying, dying. In the 80s, they started to get a pretty good job of dying and um, acid baths and dying. Now, early 70, when they dyed something, you could tell the dye job. It was a bad dye job, okay? 60s, be, before, in the 60s and before, what you find is gonna be natural grade A jade, okay? It's gonna be the real deal. So that's why you try to find vintage pieces that are older or mings or gumps. Mings and gumps, you know that it's A jade. Now what they have going on now for a short time, if you buy a jade, they will send it to the authenticator um, to make sure that it's not uh, dyed, enhanced, etc. So they will do that now. Um, and what you can do, I just bought a new one, a uh, black a UV light. And if it's been polymer field filled, for the most part, it will show up as um, at diamonds too. Now I have some diamonds I could show you here later that they fluoresce, okay? If they have that polymer. But what I've heard too, now they have some new polymer that's not showing up like that, okay? So again, you have to be really careful. Somebody bought, I think they said they paid a million dollars and it was a fake jade. It was a fake one. Yeah. So they have some new things out that make it more difficult um, to tell um, what it is. So again, if you are somebody that's into jade, try to find the older pieces. Now, every piece of my jades I've tested, they're all natural. I don't have anything that's been dyed or been enhanced or anything. Like I said, this one, if I went to buy this piece now with that translucency, it would cost a lot of money, okay? I got this in 1970. I was looking for water jade and stuff like that. It was not popular back then, but it's what I want. And when I saw this bangle in there, I grabbed it quick. And now, you know, I've tested this and it is natural jade. It is that translucent. It does have, um, now I did drop it. I cracked it here. I dropped it on a hard floor concrete yeah so I do have to get a little I wrapped the, the leather which I kind of like but I might get it with the um, wrapping of a gold around it but in this piece if I took it off you could see it's got little things of green inside it does have a little bit of green inside so this is a natural uh, water jade I do have a few pieces of water jade, like I said, that I have bought along the way. 
Now I do have this other one that's a baby bangle and I want to take and get it tested, but here it is. Now I want to, I want to make sure that it's jade. It, it is heavy like jade, okay? Um, but I want to have it authenticated that it is water jade and not a um, moss agate. But moss agate, it, it's lighter than this. You cannot find these translucent ones like this very often. Now this one I got from an old Chinese person. He had the, a set of these and I talked him out of buying one of them. And this was again many years ago. Um, but um, I thought about making it into a, um, into a necklace. I could do it into a necklace and hang a, another piece of jade into here. Oh, I wish to God it was a little bigger and it was a bangle that would fit me. <laughs> those are those things that, oh, if only, if only, if only, you know. But yeah. Again, you know, water jade before was not so popular. But now it's, you know, it's hard to find. I saw some that are listed and I don't trust them, but it's like one that's like the water jade, $30,000. Now you look at them and they haven't really sold the jade on there. They've sold other items, so it looks like they've got good ratings, but you look and see what they sold. They were cheap items. And now they've got listed jade bangles from Taiwan. They're located in Taiwan, $30,000, $28,000, But you look to see, and none of them have been sold before. So if, again, you're buying on eBay, and they got something very expensive listed and you see they've got a lot of good ratings. Look and see what those ratings are for. This looks to me like a possible con being set up. All they need to do is sell one of them and close that account and be gone. And that money is gone and you've got a piece of worthless jade for $30,000. Something that's been bleached and it's brittle. It looks good on the surface, but it's not worth anything. It's going to break. You know, and you see people and they say, well, your bangles, you need to have something between them. Jade is, if it's a good jade, no, you don't have to have something between them because jade is very, very hard. Very, very hard stone. Now this one, again, I dropped it on the concrete. <laughs> So I've got a crack in it. Um, I've got a crack in a few of them that I dropped on concrete, okay? Uh, not that they broke because I'm wearing them with others. They, I wear them, I bang them, I, you know, there's nothing gonna happen to them. Jade is very, very strong. Now, if it cracks because you're wearing it with another jade, then guess what? You got a piece of crap, it's not real jade. Okay, <laughs> I can tell you, it's not real jade, okay? Now these I just got, now I got these off of um, Amazon. Now this part up here, jade is quite fine. This fluoresces like crazy. The bottom pieces fluoresce. So the bottom pieces on this uh, have some sort of a, um, that, what do they call it? Not silicone, but something that they do to them, okay? Uh, but the top part is fine, but the bottom of all of these fluoresce. Um, so again, that's another way that you can tell um, 
the jade if it's been enhanced or anything like that. So anyway, on that note, I'm gonna leave this here, but this is mainly for my people that are buying jade and, and just some of the stuff you have to deal with. Now I've seen on the market lately quite a few old, old bangles because a lot of the more modern kids and stuff coming up don't want them and they don't understand uh, just how lovely these pieces are and how rare they are. And so, um, like I said, I have been scouring the net and because I wear such a small size, it's almost impossible to find ones that fit me. I was over the moon to find this one, a means that I can actually wear. Now it goes down further than what I would ever wear my other jades, but you know, it's quite fine, I can wear it. But um, I keep looking and looking and looking. <laughs> and there, is, there are a few that I would have bought 10 times over if they would have fit me. My best deal ever I got eBay, this piece. This piece, when it arrived, I couldn't believe it. It's 24 karat gold and that's the real deal. That's the real deal, Jade. Um, when I bought this, I bought it from somebody that had no idea what they had. Because I paid, um, was it something like two, three hundred dollars for that? And uh, I can tell you that, that piece there is worth thousands. Thousands, yeah, thousands. <laughs> But you can't find, you cannot find like this, this old style in the 24 karat with that color of an apple green jade. That's a lovely apple green jade. Now, so once in a while, you can find a killer, killer deal. You know, it's kind of like going to the, um, people have gone to the secondhand shop and they bought a, a painting or something and it winds up being you know, really expensive. Or there was one, this girl had this ring that she had been wearing for a long time. And she went there and found out it was a, a genuine diamond. And it was worth a ton of money. And she'd been wearing it, you know, for years and just, you know, thought it was uh, some sort of a simulant or something. Turned out to be, you know, an old cut diamond. Um, so yeah, sometimes if you really know what you're looking for, you can find some good deals. Um, but uh, other times you need to really beware and be leery of some of the new stuff that's coming out from China. Um, yeah, because it's, I just don't see the quality coming out, okay? I don't see the quality gems. Now, none of these, none of the jadeite comes from China anyway. It doesn't, it comes from Burma, Myanmar. None of them are mined in China, okay? So that's another thing. Um, again, uh, you've got to know your stones. You need to know your, your, your things. Um, if you're going to go be uh, buying things through eBay or Etsy, and especially things that are coming from China. Now, don't get me wrong, I do buy things from China, but it depends on what I'm buying, okay? Jade things, I don't usually buy from China because again, the jade is not mined in China. Jadeite is mined in Myanmar. Now maybe some of the nephrite, I'm not sure exactly where all the nephrite comes from. Maybe they have some in China, some nephrite, but they have also the old style, like the mutton fat, and I think some of that comes from, was it Turkey? 
I have to check on that. Now, one thing I did just get recently, which I didn't know, it's Jade Stone of Heaven, and it was written by Richard Gump from Gump's. Now, I didn't know he was really into the Jade, but apparently the owner of Gump's really was into Jade, and it's a, this is a personalized um, autographed copy by Gump. And he is really, was really into Jade. So the stuff you buy through Gumps, if you can find Gumps or, or you can find Mings, those you know are not dyed, not enhanced at all. They're the real deal. So you can always feel comfortable buying those pieces. So anyway. On that note, I'm still trying to find out if anybody knows this watching this. There was Ming's in Honolulu that I used to go to. They had a Ming's up in Ala Moana Shopping Center, the second floor. <laughs> you go up there and was right and was right there. The big <laughs> when I lived in Hawaii, I would go there and drool over the jade all the time. And back when I lived there, I was so poor, I couldn't afford anything ever ah uh, but i will go in there all the time and just look at the beautiful jay now i heard they had a mings also in san francisco and i'm wondering i can't remember the name there was a big jade store that had the best stuff up on stockton street and i'm wondering if that was the mings also Ming's J um, store. Now I remember going in there and seeing some imperial jade, but some of that really dark, but when you shine the light, it would shine through it, this, you know, real imperial jade. And that's the other store. It was either the one in Hawaii Ming's or the jade store that was, there were a couple a couple in San Francisco that were really good. There was one on Stockton and then one about halfway down. It was kind of a small, was it by Waverly, was the little side area there. But anyway, there were two stores there, Jade stores, which I just would go in and just stare at the stuff. And again, during that time, I really didn't have money to be buying too much. Um, but I did finally buy, like I said, this piece, this piece, this nice dark, the red, and these two, these two bangles, which were a matched set, okay, that I had gotten. These I had gotten from a, um, a kind of an antique store one that carried a lot of antique jade and stuff. So those I had bought um, while, while I lived there in the early, in the 70s, okay? Now what I would wanted was the snow in moss, moss and snow, but I could not afford it ever, ever. <laughs> but I do also love the red jades as well. So anyway, that's my, my thing today with the jade and the gripe with, with eBay and, you know, again, what the heck does it mean if it's a six and a half inch wrist? I need to know the name, you know, the millimeter width of the bangle. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Apparently it is because I can never get that, qu that question answered. Oh my goodness.